I'm Jay Postones. I play drums for Tesseract, and I'm going to give you a very quick drum lesson. I'm going to show you one of the ways you can start working with odd numbers in your grooves. And to do that, I'm going to pinch one of my favorite grooves from a Meshuggah song. Anyone familiar with Meshuggah will know that that is Stenger from the album Nothing by Meshuggah, probably the best album ever created by human beings on the planet. And if you're interested in an education in all things technical and groove based, go and check out that album. Now what I'd like to do is help you understand a little about what's going on in that groove so that you can maybe start applying the compositional concepts to your own playing. If you're a drummer slash a human, <laughs> I'm going to assume you can count to seven because that's what we're going to do. And I'm also going to assume that you've got a pair of drumsticks and that you've got a couple of pads or a couple of drums. And what we're going to do is play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, left, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, left, right, left, right, left. Slow down again. Right, left, left, right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Nice and easy. Get that to a point where you can just flow. Get that little pattern there to a point where you can flow and it feels nice and comfortable. Then, instead of leaving that little gap at the end, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then start again, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna just continue to play that as a constant run of sixteenth notes. Right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get it to that stage. So you can just bounce it around, make sure that left hand is doing a double stroke on the left, left, and it's not two singles. Make sure it's one movement to get that double stroke out. Get that nice and comfortable. Then, once the sticking is down, we're going to practice it to a metronome. For my metronome, I'm using metronomeonline.com. I'm not affiliated with them, but I use them for all of my practices and it's real easy. The great thing about playing these things to a metronome is that you've always got that reference point. You know where the groove is, where you're supposed to be locked into and that you're not rushing or slowing down. Once you can play that at around 100 BPM, try and increase the tempo. That was up at 160 beats per minute and I played it up there because it was a bit of a challenge. So set a speed that works for you, set a goal that works for you, there's no right or wrong, just get it as fast as you can and as clean as you can. Consistency before speed. So now we've got this pattern, we can play it along to a metronome, we're locked in, hopefully, that is the goal. We're locked in, we've got control of that pattern rather than it having control of us and we understand how it works. And the fact that it's a seven doesn't even matter, it's just a pattern, it's just a bet, 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 bet. We're just hearing this repeating pattern. Now, let's apply it musically. Instead of it just being a random pattern, let's apply it musically. What we're gonna do is keep the same pattern, but we're gonna do a, either a hi-hat, or I've got another hi-hat over there because I'm fancy, or we're gonna use a stack, um, any of those things. Something that's a fairly fast sound. And with that, we're also gonna introduce our right leg. 
we're gonna do that so that kind of thing we're going to keep that going over and over and over again and something to bear in mind when you're playing these kinds of things if you're feeling like man this is tiring it's tiring out my arm put your arm in between the cymbal and the snare don't be doing this don't be bringing it back and forward really quick put it in between the two things notice all that's happening is my wrist is twisting between the two things efficiency my friends that is what you want to work towards you don't want to be overworking so stick your hand between in the midway point between the two things that you're hitting and if you're going between them quite regularly if you're playing ghost notes like i do a lot that's going to help you out so that pattern slow down one two three four five six seven right left left right left right left right left left right left right left We're going to play that to a metronome. As an added challenge, if you want to do this, get your pedal heart working on that on either the quarter notes or the eighth notes. Over that particular groove, I like to stick it on the eighth notes, and that is going to sound like this. That kind of coordination can take a little while to develop, but start slow, put your metronome on, focus on where that pedal hat is landing, and if it's falling apart, take it a bit slower. Now we've got most of the components of a groove now. What we haven't got are any snare accents. It's all ghost notes at the moment, which feels kind of backwards. You feel like you'd fit the ghost notes in between the snare accents. So let's put the snare accents in. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna use that metronome. If you're counting quarter notes, one, two, three, four, it's gonna be on the three. Or if you're doing eighth notes, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. It's gonna be on that second set of, eight, of eighth notes. And what that means is that the pattern that we've been playing, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, sometimes that's gonna get interrupted by a snare accent because it's going to be impossible to play the exact sticking with that snare accent in place, okay? So whenever I'm presented with this kind of challenge in Tesseract, what I do is I work it out one little bit at a time. So what I'd do, for example, is take it down to this kind of speed. And work out at that speed, right, my ghost note can't quite make it over for that one, so I'm going to drop that. I'm going to leave that little space. And if I quickly play a full performance of that, you'll see exactly what I mean. There are these little spaces throughout that groove where I drop a ghost note so that I'm enabling myself to play a, a loud accent because that is more important than just putting every single ghost note in. See what I mean? Not every single one of those ghosts happens, but by having practiced that pattern, you're familiar with it, so you know where to catch up. You know if you miss that one, okay, the next one's gonna be a left or it's gonna be a right. That part of that becomes instinctual. So take that metronome back in time, slow it down, practice the pattern with the snare accent in there and build up that tempo until you can play it at a comfortable pace.
Now we're gonna increase the tempo and we're gonna get it to a point where it just flows and we're not thinking about it too much. And that might take a little time, but if you practice this kind of thing every day, do it for a week. Do it every other day for two weeks and watch how much your playing improves. Watch how much your understanding of these concepts improves. Just 10, 15, 20 minutes a day doing something like this with this amount of focus, laser focus on it, and you'll make amazing progress. So from a pattern all the way up to a really cool groove, something that's cool enough for my sugar to use. That compositional tool where you start with a number and you choose where your accents are and you copy and paste that into the future and you play that to a solid 4-4 thing, that's sick. I love using that. Tesseract used that kind of idea quite a lot and I'll be interested to see what you guys come up with if you use that within your own playing too. For more lessons like this, please make sure you sign up to my mailing list. And if you've got five seconds to do that, make it 10 seconds and fill out the little form that I've put up which tells me what you want to improve about your playing. If you do that, I will personally send you some drum lessons that I think will help you the most. If you found this lesson fun and useful, please hit that subscribe button to be among the first people to know when a new lesson goes live.